We begin with the historic end to the second impeachment trial of former President Donald Trump, this time accused of incitement of insurrection after the violent assault on the Capitol. Tonight, the Senate has acquitted the former president by a vote of 57 to 43. Seven Republicans joining every Democrat in voting guilty, but falling short of the two-thirds majority required to convict. The vote after a dramatic twist, the House managers acting as prosecutors, moving to call a witness about a heated phone call between Republican leader Kevin McCarthy and the former president during the siege. Mr. Trump reportedly refusing to tell the rioters to stand down. The president's lawyers expressing outrage at the move, an advisor to the former president saying if there would be witnesses, their side would call more than 300. Then a compromise, a statement from a representative about that phone call in question would be added to the record. Donald Trump immediately issuing a statement after the verdict calling impeachment yet another phase of the greatest witch hunt in the history of the country, saying his movement has only just begun. But then Republican Senate leader Mitch McConnell unleashed a blistering attack on the man he just voted to acquit. ABC's congressional correspondent Rachel Scott leads us off. On day five of his impeachment trial, former President Donald Trump acquitted for the second time by the Senate. Senators, how say you? On the charge of incitement of insurrection, the majority of senators, all of the Democrats. Mr. Burr. Mr. Burr. Guilty. And seven Republicans finding Trump guilty, but still falling short of the two thirds necessary to convict. He is hereby acquitted of the charge in said article. Before the vote, some last minute drama in the chamber. Lead House impeachment manager Jamie Raskin saying Republican Congresswoman Jamie Herrera Butler must be subpoenaed to testify. Needless to say, this is. Uh, an additional critical piece of corroborating evidence. It came after news reports overnight about that heated phone call between Republican leader Kevin McCarthy and former President Donald Trump in the middle of the riot. Herrera Butler saying McCarthy told her it was a shouting match. McCarthy pleading with Trump to tell his supporters to stand down, saying, quote, you got to hold them. You need to get on TV right now. You need to get on Twitter. You need to call these people off. Trump responding, Kevin, they're not my people. McCarthy then saying this, quote, yes, they are. They just came through my windows and my staff is running for cover. Yeah, they're your people. Call them off. The former president telling McCarthy, quote, well, I guess these people are just more angry about the election and upset than you are. That afternoon, McCarthy had told right ABC now, News about his attempts to get through to Trump. As I was stuck within my room. I called the president, explained to him what was going on. The House manager saying this account is so damning, Herrera Butler must testify and share her account of that conversation. Trump's defense team objecting strongly, claiming they were blindsided. I think that's inappropriate and improper. We should close this case out today. The clerk will call the roll. The majority of senators. Ms. Murkowski. <laughs> Mr. Romney, including five Republicans voting to call witnesses, hear depositions, see more evidence. But the defense team erupting, banging fists on the table. There was confusion in the chamber. Senator Ron Johnson telling colleagues this should have been over by now. Then Senator Lindsey Graham. I'd like to change my vote to aye. Threatening to extend the trial even further, tweeting, if the body wants witnesses, I'm going to insist we have multiple witnesses. After debate, an abrupt change. There would actually be no witnesses, neither side wanting a lengthy trial. Both sides agreeing instead to omit a statement from Herrera Butler into evidence, where she laid out that conversation. And then Democrats move forward with their closing arguments, making this impassioned plea. Senators. This cannot be the beginning. It can't be the new normal. It has to be the end. And that decision is in your hands. But by the end of the day, it made no right. difference. The outcome, what most Republicans predicted from the outset, acquittal. This has been perhaps the most unfair and flagrantly unconstitutional proceeding in the history of the United States Senate. And after it was all over, perhaps the most forceful condemnation of Trump came not from Democrats, but from Republican leader Mitch McConnell. There's no question, none, 
that President Trump is practically and morally responsible for provoking the events of the day. No question about it. Those comments getting a lot of attention tonight. So let's get right to Rachel Scott, who's been covering this trial from the beginning. And Rachel, this was historic. Seven Republicans voting to convict a former president of their own party. We heard those blistering comments there from Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell. But he voted to acquit former President Trump. And tonight he tried to explain why. Yeah, with Mitch McConnell not holding back tonight, but still defending his vote to acquit. He says it's unconstitutional to try a former president, but it's worth noting here that McConnell could have started the impeachment trial while Trump was still in office. And tonight, his words have Democrats outraged. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi calling it pathetic. Wit. All right, Rachel Scott, thank you again for all of your reporting on a busy week. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.